Boxing King Media in association with Box Draw, world famous Frank Smith. Uh, we're here at Wembley, London. Uh, Frank, well, last time we met in Abu Dhabi, we'll catch up on some of that conversation we had there. But today we've seen Sonny Edwards weighing at Wembley. I get the feeling he's really buzzing about this because I feel like he's waiting for this moment of limelight and people like somebody backing him on a on a big stage. And I feel like he's, he's got that today. Yeah, I was speaking to him earlier. You know, he's never really had a big a big backing from a promoter. You know, even when he was with Frank Warren, he didn't, they didn't really push him as maybe as hard as they should have done um, you know and when when the opportunity came up to sign Sonny, Ed, uh, Sonny Edwards it was it was one we couldn't you know we couldn't miss you know one of Britain's few world champions and someone who's really built something especially in that weight division that's hard to do off the back of his character and you know being the way he is he's a he's an interesting character that's not for everyone is the reality but he's built a profile off the back of that you know social media is funny I'll tell him. I've had to mute him a few times on there in the in, the, uh, in history, uh, but no, he's a he's a he's a good character to be around, and he performs in the ring. He backs it up in the ring, so he's got all the attributes. And you know, for us, it was a no-brainer to get Sonny Edwards, and delighted to really start pushing him. And you know, he wants the big fights, and that's what the key is. A lot of fighters these days don't want to take the big fights, but Sonny Edwards wants to go straight in there against the big names. You know, hopefully we can make the Jesse Rodriguez fight later in the year. There's other fights to be made as well, but yeah, it's good, uh, good to get started. And you know, a tough test against Campos on Saturday night. It's not a foregone conclusion. It's uh, Campos is a talented fighter, undefeated. Uh, I think it's going to be a decent fight and uh, on to the big ones from here as well. You know, you touched on it there. Obviously, his public persona wasn't great before. People probably didn't really understand him. I personally, when I look at the online trends, I think for me the big uh, moment was when, um, when he sparred that troll. I don't know if you ever watched that video when the troll came to the gym and the way he dealt with him without actually punching him and just making him gas out. And you saw that, I don't know if you ever saw the comments, everything changed, everything flipped. Yeah, look, he's a, he's a divisive character and he get, everyone's got an opinion on him. But it's good because there's not a lot of fighters out there that have done that on their own, you know, off their own back and built that. Um, and he backs it up in the ring as well, you know, and again, he's got the whole package there. So, you know, now he's got a real platform behind him and a pro promoter that's going to push him hard. It's exciting. And, uh, you know, everyone, a lot of, a lot of people wanted to sign Sonny Edwards. So we, we were delighted to get him and, like I say, get started on Saturday night and then some big fights before the end of the year. Sonny's accused Martinez of avoiding him and backing out of numerous offers that he's had. Um, is there any truth in that? Uh, look, I think I think we all want to make this fight happen. I think let's uh, let's focus. I think the BAM fight is the focus for us right now, and I believe it can happen towards the end of this year. And I'm very confident that we can get that over the line. We were working hard to try and get it done for this weekend, but I'm very confident we can make that happen, and uh, that's the focus for us. But the Martinez fight is a massive fight. You know, the Juan Francisco Estrada as well. It's great to see these lower weight divisions as well getting the exposure and. The, the main reason for that is because they're all going into proper fights. You know, they're, they're taking risks and taking real fights, and good to see. Definitely. So, were you? Um, did you get distracted with the, with the Shaneka Johnson win? Because I think a lot of people weren't expecting that. And I asked her; it was actually body paint, so she wasn't actually wearing anything. I haven't seen. I swear to God, I was up. I was up the back there. I was doing something, so I don't know what happened. I have to watch it. What was it? Uh, she basically weighed in in a, a painted on outfit uh, with the OnlyFans advertising on there. I reckon I might do that. I'd look quite good with a. What do you think, boys? Painted OnlyFans outfit? Do you think I'd pull it off? Yeah. Would you, you sign up for Frank? Yeah, would you, would you sign pay? up? No. Pound 99 a month? Yeah, all exclusive. Yeah, there you go. So you'll see me soon with a bit of a paint number on me, but I'll have a look. I'll let you know. Interesting stuff. Uh, I want to ask you a couple of other questions on other matters. I saw earlier on today that uh, the promoter of David Benavides has said that they're pulling out of the Canelo negotiations. I think Benavides is now fighting Morel, David Morel. Uh, so where does that leave Canelo? And uh, can I just confirm, does he have uh, another fight left with Matchroom? I actually think the David Benavides Morel fight was already ma always made, actually, for September. I thought that was already contracted ages ago. Um, Eddie's in discussions with Canelo and Eddie Reynoso, so you know, let's see, let's see how things play out. We would obviously love to continue working with Canelo Alvarez. Lots of interesting fights to be made, um, but yeah, that, that's that's our range. Continue working together, and hopefully we can get something done. Uh, when we we met in Abu Dhabi last week, I think uh, we kind of discussed. Uh, he was waiting to see if uh, Callas Salam would confirm if Chris Eubank Jr. is free to negotiate. Eddie told me yesterday that he is free to negotiate. So I'm assuming you guys are in full-on negotiations with Chris Eubank Jr. to fight Conor Ben. 
Yeah, for sure. It's the fight we all want to make happen. There's work to be done still, but um, yeah, 100% that's what we're all fully focused on. I think it's the biggest fight out there and hopefully we can get it over the line. You know, with the uh, only question I've got on this UCAT situation is if uh, they basically accept Connor's reasoning and they don't do any particular ban for him to fight in the UK, will that be the deciding factor in whether the fight happens in the UK or Abu Dhabi? No, look, it's time frames. If we get a deal done for the fight to take place in Abu Dhabi now, the fight will take place in Abu Dhabi. If in time, you know, if the fight doesn't get made now and he subsequently everything gets scored in the UK, then the fight can happen in the UK. But if we sign for the fight now in Abu Dhabi, it will take place there. We wouldn't move it. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the full focus right now is Abu Dhabi, September. Eddie confirmed also yesterday that you guys have now received an official offer from Skill Challenge for Anthony Joshua. So what, what can you tell me with that? Where are you guys at with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, we're working towards... I've actually meeting Derek Chisora tonight, Skill Challenge rep, so I'm going for dinner with... I'm having dinner around his house, he's cooking me a steak, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm meeting some other, some of the other Skill Challenge team in London tomorrow as well, so, you know, um, look, we've always been open, fully focused on AJ fighting in August and, and December, December being the Deontay Wilder fight. It's a massive fight that's been, you know, long awaited, and uh, people, people have been calling that for a long time, so let's see what happens, work to be done still, but fingers crossed we can get it over the line. Uh, the offer they've made, is it a career high payday without giving me a number? Um, I'm not giving you any numbers, I'm not giving you any detail. I don't talk. Ask him. He's the, he's the one who leaks all the information. I'm staying out of it, mate. Good. You're, you're too good, mate. You're very good at uh, avoiding uh, questions there. Uh, I've got to ask you, we saw Eddie do a, a brilliant impression. Well, I don't know if it was brilliant or not, but he did an impression of Frank Warren yesterday. What did you make of Frank's interviews the other day when he came back out, you know, at, after good few months he's been I think he's had a back injury but he's come out did some interviews Eddie obviously did an impression what did you make of Frank's interviews and can you do a better impression certainly got his pulse up didn't he I think he'd had a few glasses of wine before that one uh, I don't I don't think it's beneficial going back and forward and saying certain things we're all guilty of doing it aren't we so you know can't but I think the best thing to do is to try and make these fights happen in the background in silence uh, there's been so much talking over the past few years of making fights, they're not delivering, fans get annoyed, let's just try and do our work and that way you can't upset anyone's ego as well by, by saying the wrong thing and you know, doing the wrong thing basically. So look, I, I'm not going to, I don't think what he said helped but such is life, we have to move on, it's happened now and, and, and we go from there. How far do you think we are if you put a time scale on? Like you've had the offer now. Obviously, there's not no contracts have been sent your way, where you could make an official announcement. AJ versus Wilder. But then obviously you've got the other factor of this Dillian White fight, which is we still don't know what's happening with that. Well, what is the latest on that? No, but look, that, the August fight's not a foregone conclusion in any way. It's a real fight. You now, if we make the Dillian White fight, it's a massive fight for Anthony Joshua. It's a massive. It's going to be a massive show. So, you know, it's, it's, you can't look beyond August at the same time. You know, as much as we all want the December fight to happen, uh, we can't look beyond August. So that's the initial focus for us, and in the background we'll be working on this December date as well. Uh, last question I've got you on, on this is the four fighters involved. Is it fair, because obviously everyone's talking about who should get paid what, well, obviously it's none of our business, but in reality, who do you think should be demanding the biggest pay there, without any jokes aside, depend, you know, based on their um, commercial value? It depends. Look, ultimately, commercial value depends on individual fights. I think Anthony Joshua against Deontay Wilder is a bigger fight commercially than Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk. But at the end of the day, everyone's going to get paid a handsome amount of money. If people are outpricing themselves, it means they don't want the fight. And I'm, I think some people will try and outprice themselves. Um, but look, there's there's a lot of money there, I'm sure, uh, and I'm, I'm confident the fights will get made. But it's hard to say. Like, I, I honestly, and I'll get, not because he's our fighter, but Anthony Joshua Deontay Wilder is a bigger fight commercially than Usyk against Fury. Usyk against Fury is important for the undisputed and a massive fight on its own right. But that's just my view. Other people have a different view, say that the other fight is. But um, if they can both get made, if one of them can get made, it's massive for the sport. Um, so let's see. You, you said you're meeting Chisora tonight, and I'm, I just remembered Frank said that Chisora told him that there's 150 million pound or dollars, one of the two. Uh, is Derek mentioned that number, and and how on earth do you even get paid 150 million? Does it, does it turn up in a bag, or does it just get wired? I think Chisora. That's why I'm going around his house tonight. I think Chisora's got it there, 150 million cash. So I'm going to go and pick it up with a van, and then once that's done, I think the fight will be signed. 
So, uh, yeah, Del Boy, I'll bring the van round tonight, get it all ready and we'll come and collect it. And uh, easy as that, isn't it? It is actually quite simple. So just to confirm, the money's at Derek Chisora's house. Yeah. Uh, nobody go knows it's in. I'll get, we'll all go around there, a few of us. And uh, to be fair, I won't go around Del's house trying to take, take 150 million off him. We'll leave that. Um, but if 50s it is, or 20s? I think 20s would take a lot longer to count, wouldn't it? I mean, that would be... I, I, think, I don't think we'd count it by December. I don't think we'll be able to check it in time. So you might have to just do it by check. It'd be easier. I can imagine Del Boy dealing in cash, to be fair. I can imagine him just saying, right, Frank, van's full up. So uh, interesting stuff, uh, Frank. Uh, let us know how that goes, and I'll definitely will catch up with you, hopefully, post-fight tomorrow, so you can let me know what happened in this. And if you could help me count it tomorrow night when we turn up with a, with a eight truckloads of it, you know, which, I don't know, how much, how much space does 150 million take up? A great question. Is it definitely pounds, dollars, or is it uh, Saudi Real? Might be yen. Who knows? But I'll tell you tonight, I'll go around there, I'll take a picture of it, post it. Just make sure it's not rupees, mate. 150 million anything sounds like a lot to me. You know, but let's see. Frank, I appreciate your time, thank you.